So for the 96 of you that saw the video, um, I want to apologize. I ended up um, delisting the video because I was reading someone's comment and I can't remember your name, but if you see this video again, thank you very much for reminding me of not putting a fuse on my setup. And I tried going back, but the comments were gone after I made the video private. So um, just want to say thanks again for leaving the comment. I appreciate every single one of you that leaves a comment. I'll do my best to read them all. And I just wanted to add maybe about five minutes to this whole video. I know it's super long, but I just didn't want to make it into like a parts video because I feel like if it's all in one, it's easier to just have it all in one video than going back and forth, searching through the videos, oh, where's this, where's that? And having all the part numbers in the description down below as well. So if you guys didn't notice that, they're down there. And yeah, pretty much it. I'm just re-uploading the video, adding more to the end of me installing the, the 100 amp fuse and replacing the starter for the Celica. So apologize for the bed hair. I just got up, about ready to go to work. And thank you guys for watching the video. What is up everyone, this is Too Slow. And we're gonna be installing a battery relocation kit on my sixth generation Celica. Um, depending on how this turns out, I might do the same with my Corolla XRS because I'm trying to free up some space on the Corolla XRS so when I get the supercharger installed, um, I get more clearance room for like um, the radiator and whatnot because I think I'm gonna have to get a, a half cut radiator to clear the supercharger from hitting the AC fans and whatnot, but that'll be a story for another day. Anyways, I bought this for about $38 uh, on eBay and there was a bunch of different um, battery trays but for some reason this one caught my eye um i don't know because of the price or i thought it was probably good looking but i already took it out and i was actually really impressed <laughs> for 38 dollars so go ahead and slide this out and my immediate first reaction was how thick these are like look at that <laughs> Like, these are thick. I was a little worried that these were going to be like some thin, like thin stuff, but these just feel solid, man. <laughs> and then we got the the rods that go in between. Dude, all this just, I don't know. I don't know how they're making a profit off of this. Maybe they're, they're, they're cutting these at, in like the thousands, millions. <laughs> And that's how they're getting them cheap but you got your hardware right here you got your top bracket right here and then you have your base so i'm gonna have to upgrade phones soon because it seems like this one isn't um focusing auto focusing anymore but then again i've had this phone for about a decade now so yeah that's gonna be a future upgrade but hopefully you guys can still see everything Here's the base, looks really, really well. You have four holes to like send um, bolts into the frame of the vehicle. And then obviously these are gonna be your posts as to where you screw these on. So I'm just gonna give you guys kind of like a quick idea of how it would go. And I also did buy the zero gauge wire for this, bought it off eBay. Um, it was kind of pricey because I want some thick um, wire, but look at those guys. Like <laughs> the quality on this just feels so good. I actually thought it was gonna be like some lower POS quality. And as I said, I'm, I'm just really impressed. <laughs> it looks freaking great. Obviously it's rattling right now cause it's not, it's not tight, but I mean, look at that base is right there. So. <laughs> It has weight to it as well. That, that's what's that's what's like making me happy about it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. Um, I think I'll just hold on to them. Maybe they're just spares. Or I don't think you would put them at the bottom because then it would just make more space, and this won't even be able to sit flush. So I may put some red Loctite on this so that it doesn't like wiggle out. But that's the post. I'll go ahead and put links to that in the description down below. And I also went ahead and picked up the harness or the wiring. Oof. This is some beefy stuff right here, man. Check this out. 
It's the freaking size of my pinky. <laughs> and I have sausage sausage fingers, man. But so I had I bought a 13 foot um positive lead and yeah, I'm not a fan of, of this style because I'm pretty sure this isn't even going to be metric size. It's going to be standard size. But overall, the the build, the quality is just there, guys. Like like very very impressed. So um, we're gonna ground it to the frame of the vehicle in the back and then we're obviously gonna run this all along the door sills to the back and we should be able to um, get this wired up correctly but look at that heavy-duty welding cable <laughs> um, it does have a, a little bit of a flex to it but not that much so I'll let you guys know how the installation goes when I go about making this video but unfortunately I don't have everything yet needed for the the relocation i still need my junction i actually did get my my cable crimper here so we're gonna go ahead and open that real quick so there you have it the crimping tool tools for professionals about crimping tool for eight to one oh so i bought this off amazon for about under 30 bucks i think it was like 25 bucks but dude this thing feels like quality man <laughs> this actually feels pretty good so i think this is gonna do the job really well i mean you guys you guys are probably gonna be like well why'd you buy it for just one car well if you guys didn't hear me i might do this to my corolla xrs because i want to create some more space in the engine bay for the corolla and i might go ahead and reuse it and for whenever i gotta just fix battery terminals on vehicles i have the right tool for it i won't be using like a hammer now and i'll actually do it correctly so it's a win-win plus it's cheap off amazon there you have it this is what i have so far don't have everything so we're gonna have to wait till we get everything so i took out all my fabric and trunk hatch area internals <laughs> over here and i kind of was playing around with a few battery locations um i kind of i kind of wanted to put it there but after thinking about it i'm kind of crippling my my trunk space area if i do put it there like i can't be able to put anything long or this way because the battery's gonna be there so i kind of made it fit over here and the only downside about it is so it does meet up with the mounting tabs and all i would have to do is just trim it a little bit on the plastic right here to clear the the battery tray and it's on both sides as well but it's not that bad and if i were to drill if I were to drill and send bolts to the floor or to the underside I can easily access the bolts through the bottom because that's the frame rail right there and I can just come down here and I have complete access to that whole area right here and I don't have to worry about where I cut or drill because the gas tank is nowhere near here and the gas tank is all the way over there so I think I'm gonna stick with this idea first. So I think that's where I'm gonna go ahead and mount the battery tray. Um, just because I wanna have this area of the wheel well open, just in case I go on a long trip and I wanna bring a spare wheel with me and you know, it clears the area. And this whole area right here, this whole area is accessible from the bottom side because this is my frame right here. This is how wide it is. So the frame pretty much goes underneath. And right there's the mounting points. So I can easily as well pull one of these out and mount my, my ground to that frame point right there. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and go that route. Got a punch tool, went in there and already made my punch marks so that I could come in here and drill without the drill dancing all over the place. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my holes right now. There you go. Fits perfectly.
You want to make sure you do that a couple of times just so they could go down a bit. And that way it's easier for the drill to catch on there. I couldn't see where the, I did the punch marks on these holes over here. So I ended up just putting two of the bolts already. And I'm over here. I just feel it around until it gets caught where the hole is at. Oh, there it goes. Got caught. So just, just keep doing the, the punch mark until it gets caught. Got caught. All right, let's do it over here. Keep moving it until it gets caught. Let me do it this way. Right there's our mark. Right there, you see it? There you go. One hole, two hole. That one's already been open, so I don't know if there was a grommet originally there, but we're gonna put something there. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead and put RTV, or not RTV, probably some body sealer on the other side to kind of keep the water out of here. Went ahead and cleaned up the whole area, and we're gonna go ahead and use some Rust-Oleum undercoating. Stops rust. So this is some good stuff. I use this on like on a lot of things, and I love this kind of stuff. So shake it up a bit. We're gonna spray that area. So there you have it, sprayed the whole area off, and then we're about ready to put the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and grind it off with a with a wire wheel to get a proper contact for the ground. So while that is drying up, went ahead and bought this from Harbor Freight. It's a nut washer and bolt assortment, 460 pieces. It's what I ended up using for the front um, grill. Um, since the grill for the SC205 has a lot of um, hardware and all of it was old stuff so I just wanted to use some fresh hardware so this cost me like I don't know three four dollars from Harbor Freight and it has a bunch of different sizes luckily it has sizes for the exact size of this hole right here so it's gonna end up working out for us and right now I'm just playing the waiting game letting this dry up so I'm gonna come back in like about an hour just so gives it enough time to dry up I mean the can probably says it's like 15 minutes to touch to dry so there it is it's installed and it's on there dude look at this <laughs> pulling it it ain't moving anywhere so let's go check on the bottom so you can see oh pretty much did that Next thing we're gonna have to do is trim a little bit the panel. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put everything back together, like the clip that goes right here, um, the clip that goes up here as well. Actually, I think that's it. Or am I missing one over here? Yeah, I'm missing one over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all those clips back in. Um, I guess the downside about it is servicing Actually, no, I don't even have to take those off to service the tail lamp. I could just get the screw there, and then the two that are right here comes right out. So that's not even going to be in anything's way other than, I guess, the trim right here. But that's fine. I'll just get a Dremel, cut it to size like that. Same deal over here. Pop and a battery in place. So um, I'm going to wait for the other things to arrive, and I'm going to go buy the battery right now to finish up what I can. I also went ahead and grinded off all the paint underneath the bolt and on the threads so it can get a pretty good ground. So we're gonna go ahead and put our ground cable on and see how it looks. I also had to go ahead and make the hole a little bit bigger so that I can make the bolt fit. So I was having a bit of an issue getting it on this bolt because there wasn't enough straight away. So what I ended up doing was Instead of putting it on that bolt, I decided to put it on this one. So I ran the, ne the negative cable through the first hole towards the back or straight away to the front one, I should say. <laughs> and these, these, these did come with caps. So once those dry up, I'm going to go ahead and put the caps back on. Um, and 
that is my negative post or negative cable. So that one was easy. Now we're gonna have to do the ground, the positive one. Just got back from O'Reilly's and I ended up buying an Optima Yellow. It is a 3478. Um, I know this is a bit controversial because there's like a lot of people that have been telling me, oh, Optima got bought out by some other company and they're not making them like how they used to, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, um, I'm just gonna say that it hasn't happened to me that I got a bad battery because this is actually my first time buying an Optima. So, I mean, I have three year warranty on it. So if something were to happen within it, three years, then, you know, um, that's about $100 a year for this battery since it cost me 300. So it is what it is. It's, I'm using it for its intended purpose to have it inside. So that's why I ended up going with it. And because of the battery bracket is made for this battery. A cool thing about O'Reilly's, if you guys didn't know, if you guys take in old batteries that you guys don't have receipts for cores, they will give you a $10 gift card. So I took in two <laughs> on top of my core for their $10 gift card promotions that they have. And this is a year round. So you could go to any O'Reilly's at any time and they'll give you a $10 gift card. So I ended up getting this $20 off this battery. So in reality, I pretty much bought this tax free. So if you live in a tax free state, then it's probably gonna be cheaper. But because I live in a state with tax, I pretty much bought this for retail $2.99. Um, tax free so worked out for me as I said hundred dollars a year because I got three-year warranty on it so it doesn't seem too bad plus looks pretty cool and the uh, hatch follow the YouTube channel <laughs> but anyways we are inside the Celica as you can see inside the hatch area and I'm already going ahead and routing the positive lead. And what I'm doing here is I'm just following the stock body harness, the one that goes from the from the from the fuse box to the front to the back. As I cut a hole right here, not the cleanest, but I mean it will do for now. I'll probably find a grommet later down the road to like kind of cap it off. I don't know something so that. It looks a little bit more presentable, but that will have to do for now. Instead of it coming all the way, it's going to come through this way and pop out through here and immediately get into the... Oh, this can come off? Oh, that's cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't want that there. There you go. That looks so much better. Oh my God, I thought I was going to have to live with that, but I didn't see that if you slide it all the way down, it'll come off. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Anyways um let me go ahead and reroute that wire but what i did was i pretty much popped off all my panels and it's just following down i'm gonna zip tie it i have my zip ties oh yeah i have my zip ties so i'm just gonna zip tie it all along the body harness and go from there so that's how i ended up going and you guys are probably thinking why did you run it through here it's gonna get cut well there the edges are I guess folded in creased in so that it's not a sharp edge so that's gonna work out and I'm just gonna run it all along that I did zip tie it as much as I could over here to kind of keep it together so not much I could zip tie right here so I'm just gonna leave it like that hope for the best I guess <laughs> so let's start putting it all back together and go to the front so I got everything back together but unfortunately I broke the clips that hold the light on um, I didn't realize that this was gonna be all behind this so um, when I was pushing the panel back on I it broke the clip so um, I think that's actually gonna be somewhat in the way I tried folding it but this this is thick wire guys so like it's barely full bending as it is so I don't know I might consider deleting this I'll put like a block off plate and I'll just run the, the wire and I'll probably install like some sort of different illuminating because I'm pretty sure that doesn't even do shit. Like it doesn't even illuminate anything here. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe run some some lighting, an LED strip all along up here 
to kind of light up the whole place but I don't know that's that's still in the prop that's still like something I'm thinking about but regardless I tried moving that so if I move this it's not gonna the the plastic panel is not gonna like it so the clip is on there right now and it's just not gonna like it if I move that some other way this isn't bothering me too bad I'll most likely just put a block off plate and call it a day so I got it all zip tied and when I put this over it doesn't there's like a lot of space right here for the seat to go back and forth so that's not gonna be an issue of rubbing got it all zip tied on the bottom of the tabs so I think it's gonna be good check that out it doesn't even look like it's even here so that's gonna be cool so that's about how much I have left. I think I should be fine, but if you guys are really worried about length, I recommend getting the 15 foot one. This is a 13 foot um, cord. So now we're gonna go down here and see where I could just shove it through. So I don't see any holes that I can access, I have easy access to other than the boost gauge one but that's kind of far out of the way and i kind of wanted something over here but i didn't notice this there's a hole right there from something previous that the i guess the previous owner had so i shoved the metal zip tie through it because i want to see where it pops out of probably the top of the slave cylinder the master cylinder so we're gonna go inside and see if i can get easy access to the hole you can kind of see the hole right there. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get the drill through there. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to make that hole bigger. But I think we're going to run the cable through there. So that hole at the top wasn't going to work out because um, I was going to run the this in between that right there. And it was just going to create an angle to where it can cut the the cable eventually and cause a short, really bad short. So what I ended up doing was I made another hole. Well, that one was already there. I just made it bigger. So that's my mess up. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to probably put some a piece of a piece of metal on one side and just RTV the other side. Hope for the best. But anyways, this is what I did right here. I made another hole and my drill wasn't reaching. So my my drill right here wasn't reaching with all these attachments. So first I did my pilot hole with this one. Obviously I did my, use the punch to center it. Did my pilot hole at first and then I maxed out the, uh, where is it at? I had a step up bit. I don't, oh here it is so i used the step up bit all the way and that still wasn't that still wasn't big enough for the really thick hose or the really thick cable so my next idea was using these allen sockets and this isn't the right tool <laughs> but you know one of those i'm one of those guys that that uses the wrong tool for the project but it worked so what i did was I put this on the on the end and then I pretty much just put it up there and I was hitting it with the hammer and so what that created was the the metal the sheet metal was pushing uh was pushing in a curve outwards so that the sharp edge can fix itself if you if that makes sense so basically it was pushing out the edges out so it was making like a like a flared out on the sheet metal is basically flaring out so i was working my way up i first did the 12 and then i did the the 14 and then i finally finished it off with the 17. so that's how big that hole is and that was pretty big enough for the the cable to go through and so i don't know if you guys did also notice i put a piece of rubber hose around it um, I'm about to put a zip tie on this side I already put the zip tie on the other side but I put a piece of rubber hose so that it if it does have to rub it'll rub on the hose first before it rubs on the the cable itself so let's go check it on the other side it's not gonna pick it up but you guys can see right there 
put the rubber hose around it, made it go through, and then I zip tied the rubber hose to the wire. Gives you a better idea of what was happening. See how it beveled out the sheet metal? So, um, not happy with right here. I, I missed this whole area when I was painting it, but I'm gonna have to paint anyways right here because this is where the metal line was that I replaced with this um, flexible one right here. So that's gonna be a video for another day, but at the very least, I already got this situated and you can see I kind of have it all the way out here. It maxed out right here. So that's gonna be a perfect spot to mount the, the junction box somewhere around there. We're gonna mount the junction box and it's gonna look good. So now I'm just gonna test it out real quick. I'm gonna remove this battery. Look at this, this is so restrictive on the air the air filter. So I'm glad I'm finally taking this off because it also looked ugly, I didn't like it, and it, it's in the way of this. So it's gonna clear up more space. So in the meantime, I have my positive on my actual positive for the one I was using right here in the front. And I just got a bolt attached it to it and just wrapped it in the rubber cap. So I think that should be okay for now, just for testing purposes. And my grounds, I have multiple grounds. I have this big one over here. And then I have, where else do I have grounds? I have one right there that goes to right here. And then I have one over here. So let's see if that cranks the engine at the very least. And then if that does, we'll just start cleaning up right here, getting ready for when the junction comes tomorrow. So let's go connect the battery and see what happens. All right, guys, so I got the positive right there. Negative, let's see what happens. Okay, we got power. <laughs> we got power. Let me tighten these down and crank the engine. Right, that's tight. So what I'm gonna do with this negative, I'm probably gonna hide it behind the panel that goes right here. So I'm gonna make another hole right here on this panel so that it just looks a little bit cleaner because I'm not gonna want this dangling like that. So that's gonna be a video for another day, hiding this negative, but for now, that's good. We got power, so let's try to go crank the engine. All right, so our door works. We got a light for that. Do we got lights? Yeah, we got lights. You can barely see it. We got lights. All right, so. Oh my God. Holy shit, it's working. It's working, guys. I'm scared. No freaking way, dude. No way. That's awesome. Yo. <laughs> Battery relocation complete. No way. <laughs> check engine light but I do want to add an extra ground a bigger one to the frame of the vehicle just for safety measures um, those little tiny grounds that I got on m8 bolts I don't think that's enough I want to get at least an m12 or um, yeah an m m10 or an m12 bolt at the very least to mount it on the frame of the vehicle but we're supposed to be getting a junction box for the positive so it looks a, a bit better than just having the the cables all dangled up in a bunch like this. So now that I removed the battery right here, I'm gonna make it a little bit cleaner here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the battery tree. And in order to do that, I have to grind off all the body um, sealer that they put. I think that's what it's called. 
and we're gonna drill out the we're gonna drill out the spot welds just a little bit so that I'm able to chisel this bracket off. So don't really need this, and it lets me get full more access to that um, the evap canister so that when I gotta do emissions, I could throw that back on really easy, and when I don't need it, I could just take it off. So um, let's go ahead and keep working on this. What I'm using is my DeWalt cordless with a Harbor Freight um, wire wheel. Didn't even realize that I was doing the wrong ones. That's literally for the frame of the vehicle or for the apron, I should say. So I found the ones for the battery tray. You got two right here, two right there, two, two. So we got eight spot welds to drill out. Of course, I'm gonna use the Harbor Freight punch, and just a drill bit, and get those uh, holes drilled out. There's two more over here on each side. I don't know how I'm gonna get those, so I'll do my best to get a drill through there. If not, then I'm just gonna use my angle disc and just cut them away or grind them off. But for now, this should be good. So you can kind of see, I already got this side lifted up, got these drilled out and you can see i've drilled through the metal so now i have enough leverage to just start using the the hammer to pull up on it rather than using the a flat head to chisel it out i don't have the right tools for or i don't have a chisel so i guess i don't have the right tools for the job but this seems to be doing the job just right so i'm just gonna start prying up and see how far i can go with this hopefully i'm able to do the whole thing so there you have it i already got all these drilled out and lifted up already the tray so i'm gonna see if i could just shove a flat head right here and just hit it with the hammer and hope for the best same goes for this side i could probably do it but we'll see if not then i'll let you guys know what happens but other than that we're gonna have to repaint this whole thing so it doesn't seem too too bad um I want to touch up this whole area anyways so man the lighting on this shit sucks so unfortunately i did break the bracket you can kind of see a little bit of the piece remain there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do the same thing on this side and i'm just gonna get my angle grinder and grind that off completely off before i paint the whole thing so i think it'll look good and plus i kind of wanted to go on with an angle grinder throughout the whole thing just so they could be smooth. So let's go ahead and continue ripping this side off. I think it's almost off. If I just bend it back and forth, should probably get it off. All right, there we have it. <laughs> Battery tray deleted. So I had this piece of aluminum right here because I was originally running the the cruise control module to make it look OEM as possible, but I kind of figured if I'm not going to use the cruise control to just wire up the, or to just route it as a single, just I guess through the, the gas pedal itself. So here's the final result of that mess. So we're gonna use an angle grinder, grind that off completely, cover up the area and shoot some paint on it. So I ended up moving the whole evap canister just to get me space to use the angle grinder and I got it down to as much as I wanted it. So we're gonna cover as much as we can with masking tape and a bunch of paper because I don't want any of this overspray on my brand new paint. So right there it is. I'm gonna end up cleaning it all up, trimming the brackets to make it look a little bit cleaner and go from there and then we, another thing i have to do is reduce this wire for the fan because it is incredibly long it doesn't need to be that long here's the here's the harness for it literally reaches the fan already so i'm gonna short this down a ridiculous amount so that i could just zip tie it all along the rail and just call it a day broke this and then the clip it just broke off as well it looked like someone glued glued it originally so it is what it is um i'm just gonna go buy another starter because this is this looks sketchy <laughs> and i've already tightened it as much as i can so it's still kind of sketchy so i'm just gonna go get that replaced and other than that um engine bay is looking a bit better now so um we're gonna we're supposed to be getting our junction today 
and I'm gonna put the battery junction somewhere like around here. So it arrived in the mail, the battery junction box, red and black pair. It's by Casper Electronics. Casper the Friendly Ghost sent me this. There's some more information of them. Bought this off Amazon for about $15, $17, I think. And thank you again, Irvin, for pointing it out to me. But this one, the only reason I wanted to get this one as well is because it's covered. Like, if I go right here, I can cover it and it's not exposed in the engine bay to where something can touch it and it just creates a spark and bad things happen, basically. So I like it that it's covered and we're gonna go ahead and pretty much put this in the middle where the red cable is coming out this way and then the one to the starter and to the fuse box go out to. So that's that's the plan for, for today. And so let's go ahead and install this. So I already went ahead and mounted up my positive box. Oh my God, why doesn't that wanna come out? Well, anyways. So I have, this is my, this is my 12 volt that goes to the starter itself. By the way, I'm getting a new starter because this one, look at this, it broke. Damn thing broke while I was taking it apart. So I got my base right here and I got my wire, my cable that's coming from the battery, from the back to the front. I'm gonna post it right here and then we're gonna get our 12 volt that goes from the fuse box we're gonna put that one next it doesn't really matter which way they go just as long as they're there and then we're gonna get our 12 volt for the starter Let's put it in there and that should be good enough and then we're gonna put our screw and or our nut and put it on doesn't have to be crazy tight, just as long as they're snug. And there you have it. Might need to make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to make that bigger because it looks like it's popping out from this side. Oh my God, this focus looks like it's popping out from this side. So we're gonna make that a little bit bigger just so that it's not struggling. I'm just gonna get a little file and just kind of make it a little bit bigger. But other than that, it's on there looking pretty sweet so I know I could probably get better looking cables and I probably will in a later date but for now these will do so that's how it will originally go so we're probably just gonna zip tie these together for now and just kind of have them there chilling and for the grounds I will go ahead and do that right now so I didn't really do this on camera because it was actually really, really tight, but I ended up doing my grounds. So one of the grounds goes on the bolt on top of the transmission and the other one goes um, on the casing of the transmission itself. So two grounds, pretty thick wire, and I merged both of them to this right here. And awesome part about this, this kit is that it comes with the the rubber grommet to go over it so there you have it uh, it kind of slips too much all right uh, it kind of stayed in place but what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna put a zip tie right here kind of hold it in place but overall it looks pretty cool looks pretty good covers the, the exposed wire and this kit right here is again thank you Irvin, for pointing it out for me there you go that's what it is and this is the part where i use the the tool I showed you guys early on in the video, this one, um, I couldn't really do with my hands occupied with this, but that is our ground and let's go ahead and install it. So that Casper um, kit came with this cap. Oh, and I put a little bit of solder right here because it was starting to, I felt like the, the two wires were starting to slip out of right here, even after crimping it pretty hard. So I just threw a little bit of solder on it it's probably a little bit of cold solder actually, but I I was I was on it for a cool minute, so hopefully it's good enough. Hopefully it doesn't slip out. That was the main issue. So um, I ended up taking this one out and put this one in favor. So let's go ahead and install our 
harness here. So I'm gonna use this as my ground right here. It's on the frame rail of the vehicle, so I think it might work out. So let's go ahead and put it all together and see if it goes from there. So let's see if it goes all the way through. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I do it another method, another way? Because this is what I kind of have in mind right now. I mean, it's kind of hard to hide these, like, I guess, big wires. It's kind of hard to hide them. But if you guys maybe have a different idea, I mean, I think it looks good. I think it looks all right. Wouldn't really bother anyone. <laughs> um, I think it looks actually clean cleaner than what it was before so I'm gonna put the intake back on put everything back together and see how it looks like you know what with the intake on and everything in place it looks good I'm not complaining guys this looks pretty good in my in my opinion my car if I like it it's cool so um job well done guys I like it <laughs> I don't know what more to say so our next job is to get the starter replaced unfortunately but it is what it is Luckily, I'll get it from O'Reilly, so I'll have lifetime warranty on it. And, you know, it, it looks great. I could have wire took these a little bit better, but, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of hard. This isn't a computer case, guys. I'm not going to be able to wire tuck every single wire. Like, I got to shorten it. I got to extend it to tuck it, to be able to hide it, reroute it. And that just seems like a lot of work. I mean, when you open up your engine bay and this is all you see, this should be... I'm content with this, <laughs> except with this right here. Just move that out of the way. So, <laughs> I listened to that guy's reply on a fuse, and here we have one. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description as to where I got this. It's a 100 amp fuse. It's pretty big, so I already got one side done. So all I'm doing is basically I just cut this. I'm going to expose a little bit of wire and I'm just going to shove it in here. Use the Allen, use the Allen to lock it in place right here. And then I'm going to put the, the plastic cover back on. So <laughs> apologize for doing this late at night, but kind of want to get this video out already. And I think I done messed up the hole where I got, where I decided to drill the hole, but um i'm gonna drill another hole and what i have in mind is i kind of want to send this right here mount the fuse right here and then make another hole right here at the top so that it just goes this way so might be a future episode um i might just go to the junkyard and get a whole new one of these celicas are pretty common here in california so um, I'm probably just going to go get another one of these once I figure out the situation where I'm going to mount it. But for now, just so that I could be driving this car around, I'm just going to mount it right here in the back and call it a night. So I have decided I am not going to run that stupid little light anymore. I'm just going to run the fuse through there makes it so much convenient and on the plus side I get to mount it right here on the plastic and it, it's on there it ain't going anywhere and the beautiful part about it is the wires aren't really being stretched they're pretty much straight and over here same deal I got enough slack going through the whole car so in case something were to happen this is gonna blow before anything else and just so you guys can see that there is power through the vehicle I'm going to put this on real quick and you guys can see right there. Same with the dashboard over there. We got a little light. So that leads me to believe or that tells me that everything's good. So I'm not going to start right now because it's pretty late at night. So, yep. <laughs> 